So this idea of what constitutes three or more stories is actually quite uh, involved and so I just thought I'd talk you through what uh, the licensing legislation recognises as a story because if we can only license properties under mandatory licensing which are on three or more stories and have five or more occupiers and are HMOs note three requirements there so we're only licensing HMOs on three or more stories with five or more occupiers then we need to work out um, what we decide is going to be okay to use as a story so looking at this diagram here if you've got a normal house which I'm waving the cursor around here which has got a ground floor a first floor and a second floor then it's pretty straightforward you've got a house with three or more stories uh, same goes sir if you've got an attic conversion um, and so a good rule of thumb to apply if you're trying to work out if a property a story counts as a story or not um, is is there a flight of stairs to get up to it if there's a flight of stairs to get up to it or to get down to it then you include it in the store number of stories for your property so we've got a house here which is got a habitable basement uh, and we've got a flight of stairs that goes down into the basement then we include the basement so what we wouldn't include for instance is a, a loft where if you had to pull down open up a loft hatch and pull down a step ladder to get into the roof of the property we don't include the roof of the property so it's only uh, stories which you can use a flight of stairs to get to nice and easy to remember if you remember the stairs there is um, also a concern because remember I talked about um, the requirement for a property um, to come under mandatory licensing was determined by whether originally by whether it was um, uh, posing a higher risk to the occupiers for fire safety uh, and so it was quite a nice easy thing for the uh, legislators to sell um, to parliament um, in order to get the legislation through uh, note that this came through before uh, the uh, before devolution um, so um, if you are trying to make a case for bringing extra standards for amenities then uh, being able to say that these properties pose an extra fire safety risk and therefore all of them need to have a minimum level of fire safety provision a minimum level of fire safety amenities in them then that was quite an easy thing to sell so that went through uh, without a problem um, but there was an additional concern for fire safety so what if you had a house or a flat which had a mixture so a block of flats which had a mixture of residential flats um, and commercial use if you've got mixed residential and commercial use within a building and I'm talking here if you imagine uh, a precinct of shops will very commonly have a shop on the ground floor uh, and then you'll have a two-story flat over the top of it and so the question is should we be considering that because where you've got mixed commercial and residential in the same building the fire safety risk goes up a great deal as well uh, it's a much higher risk for fire safety we have got them mixed up um, uh, within one building and so they decided to allow this extra uh, uh, special rule where if you had a level of commercial use uh, within the property and I'm talking proper commercial use not just like a desk in someone's living room they use for working from home um, then that would as act as a kind of bonus floor so uh, you can see two examples of this here we've got a ground floor shop and office um, and then we've got a first and second floor masonette flat so that's a flat over two levels it's a masonette or two or more levels is a masonette so in this case we've got a two-story flat so the two-story flat gives us one two floors and then the shop and office in the ground floor creates a third bonus floor it acts as a bonus floor and creates a third floor for our flat so in this we would say that we've got a licensable uh, mandatory licensable property here um, we've satisfied our flaws requirements from mandatory license for property it also works the other way around bizarrely if your shop or commercial level is above your flat rather than below it and goodness knows how often this occurs but not that often from what I've seen um, then you can have a two-story flat and the 
the commercial floor still counts as a bonus floor so then uh, that would give you a three-story um, flat that you could then uh, call uh, mandatory licensable if it had five or more occupiers of course so remember that um, you can either just have three straight uh, three story flat or house that counts um, as uh, three stories for your three story five person requirement for licensing you can have a uh, two story flat and then if you've got a, a resident so if you've got commercial accommodation that acts like a bonus floor to give a theoretical third floor in the that flat so that would also satisfy the three story requirement um so having got your head around that um please do now remember one uh decrying shame uh so awful shame that they included this uh, but it's very confusing um is that um, if it's uh, if the commercial floor is in a basement then it doesn't get counted it's only commercial floors above ground level and I only way I've managed to come up with to remember this uh, and I bear with me because it is quite difficult and I appreciate that you're you're probably waving your arms at the screen but um, is to remember that person that's on the top floor of the property that's got to jump out um, to escape a fire because it got trapped up there um, well if they're only jumping from the first floor to um, the ground outside then they might hurt the ankle or something like that when they land but they'll generally be okay um, but if they're jumping from the second floor of the accommodation to the ground they're probably going to really seriously injure themselves um, and so if you're only looking at above ground stories then um, you can still consider the the properties that got three stories in it um, and so that's uh, that four would be dangerous so if you've uh, if your commercial accommodations in the in the basement then that's um, not going to affect the distance that the uh, person has to jump in order to escape the fire so you don't need to include it it's only if it makes your building higher uh, above the external ground level um, that you need to consider it. So that's the best way of remembering it.